I believe I cleaned out Australia in the last year. I've been in Ebron, and there's only one name that's on the list. I'm at my prime, he's at his prime, so why not do this now? Tim's definitely growing as a fighter, and he's taken on some great names like Dwight Ritchie, Joel Camilleri. He, he's beating them quite convincingly, so he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. He's the top dog in Australia. He's the, the former world champion, so I've always wanted to, to test myself. I think Tim has definitely got the ability out there. Whether he's got it now or not is a question to be asked, and that's the question I'm going to be asking on the night when, when we're fighting. I've got a lot hanging. I've got a lot to prove. And for me, this is the, this is the beginning. I was there present at the, the Jeff Horn Manny Pacquiao fight, and as soon as the fight finished, I looked at my manager and said, I'm make this happen. I know I'll win, you know, two years later down the track. Here we are. So I'd say he's only getting this opportunity because of his, his last name. His dad was an absolute legend, and any other probably domestic fighter, I'd be looking at big fights I can take overseas. But Tim is a massive name domestically that I can take and put the show on. I've always wanted to be the best in Australia, and this is the last name I got on the list. Once I finish this, on to bigger and better things. I watched it back the day after. I think I boxed well. Certainly boxed very good in the first half of that fight. I trained my guts out. I hated what he was saying. Pre that fight, he was belittling me in, in every way, saying that I didn't have the skills, didn't have anything on him. So it made me very motivated to beat him. I didn't feel that bad in, this, in the second one, but sure, I was under a little bit of fire at that stage, but I don't think it was a towel throwing in worthy opportunity, but certainly because of the first fight and that in mind, it was probably a close call. In the corner of Jeff Horn, there is no towel. And the guy pushing forward and trying to end this clock and get through this horrendous ninth round. Oh, he's iced him. He's iced him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, round nine is my voodoo round and started getting tired again in that round. And he, he, he really thought he could go after me and really finish me off in that round again. And I was like, hell no. <laughs> I just leant back and, and landed that big overhand right, and I was so happy to land it. He's a tough bugger. He, he got back up and kept on fighting, so all credit to him. The last couple of rounds got a little bit ugly for both fighters, but you know, it was a war, you know, and, and Jeff, I think he clearly in that fight outboxed Michael Zarafa. He outpunched him, he out bullied him, he out IQ'd him, he got the job done. So it was a huge improvement from one to two and in a very short space of time. That wasn't the Michael Zarafa we've seen in the previous well, 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 once for a while, but as soon as Michael got that confidence in the first fight, look what he done. As soon as he got his confidence in the second fight, look what he done. Why wouldn't he be confident going in from the first round? And I, I put that down to Jeff Horn being that awkward, you know, guy that that, that yeah showed Michael's Rafa, hey, I've got the guts, I'm coming straight back in. You've knocked me out, but I'm gonna come back out there and I'm gonna meet you head on. I knew I had to finish off the fight nice and strong. I knew it was a competitive fight, so I had to beat Michael, I had to beat him convincingly, and I feel like I did that with that big right hand that I threw at him. I couldn't say it beats the Manny Pacquiao victory. That was an absolute dream come true, but this is up there. It was a, it was a massive comeback, and I guess that teaches a lot of young ones these days to teach them never to give up, and that, that you can come back stronger, and it's exactly what I did, and I showed you can prove and you can do. Michael Zarafa had this fight in the bag, and Jeff Horn pulled a punch from the gods. Oh, I still haven't been able to watch it. I've only watched one round. That's the round number nine, where Michael was giving it to him, and he just, out of the woods, came out of nowhere without it, without overhand, which is quite impressive. But I think he's got that round nine curse. Are you interested to know that Tim Zhu hasn't watched either of your fights against Michael Zarafa? That is interesting to know, but he definitely wasn't thinking he was going to be fighting me, or else he would have been watching it. So that's interesting to know. Brubaker now, Zoo goes back to work and Brubaker looks ready to go. 
Oh. He pulls him on and he comes forward, this Brubaker. And Jeff Fennick has a towel in his right hand. Only halfway through the round, he's got, got far too many shots. He collapses against these ropes and now Zoo will go to work. And there's the towel. Jack Rubecker, he, he spoke a lot of stuff, said a lot of unnecessary things. Good on him for speaking his mind, but some of the stuff he said was not appropriate for myself. I wanted to teach him a lesson. You know, even if I wasn't angry, even if no one said anything, I would have still came out the same way. Boxing, there's nothing personal in boxing. So uh, when I get in there, it's pure business and that's it. Um, I'm there to fight and I'm there to, to take my opponents out. <laughs> it wasn't really in my head. He just said a lot of things that are unnecessary. I wanted to teach him a boxing lesson. And I knew after the fight all it was going to be, it's going to be excuses. And I think the excuses are still coming out for him. I just wish it continued a little bit longer. <laughs> he was very impressive in the, the Brubaker fight. I think his Brubaker style definitely suited him. And he was able to get rid of him pretty easily in that fight. So we didn't see him push too much in that fight because he's gone to that next level. And it will be exciting to see how he fares up against myself. Dundee helped drive Horn to his greatest achievements in the squared circle, lifting him to the heavens after they took Pacquiao's belt. Now the Korean boxer's divulging all he knows to a bitter rival. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. He rests yeah. between sets. Imitating Jeff while training his foe. So he punches like that. <laughs> Strategies and tactics. Yeah. Yeah. I support him, yeah. Dundee Kim has been a massive supporter of my career from early days, after the Olympics and after a few fights I had pro. I went to Dundee as a, as a potential sponsor and he became one for me and I found out that he was pretty nifty on the pads as well and decided to help me out with some strength and conditioning, which is what I definitely needed. When I saw that with Tim Zhu and Dundee Kim, I was, I was kind of shocked and surprised. I, I didn't know how to take the situation. I was, I'm a little bit hurt that he would do that straight away, how soon it ha has been after we've kind of just separated. But look, I, I don't know what to say. He's, um, I don't know if he shot himself in the foot, but if I saw Dundee as part of the corner, I'd, I'd just be disappointed. I don't think it's going to change the way I fight. It was a bit of a shock to both Jeff and I that what does he hope to gain from it? I don't know, because Tim's not going to leave Igor and his team, of course. He's got a great team. But, of course, if someone can share any information with him, naturally, he's going to take advantage of that. It's very un-Australian to stab a mate in the back, and we just couldn't understand why he would do that. Why would he share that? What has he got to gain from it except five minutes of fame on TV? So there was just no logic to me in doing that. Nothing happened. But they got a bit upset, but that's their problem. I've got my own team, I've got my own coach, I've got everyone. Everyone around me is perfect. Everyone knows me since I was a young kid. So for me to change things around, it was never going to happen and it never will happen. Now walking around on the streets, people are coming up to me and saying one thing, and it's to knock Jeff out. I don't know what they have personal on him or why they dislike him, but everyone's ask for one favour and it's to knock him out. So, you know, that's something I can't control about what people think about Jeff, but that's just the, that's what's happening in, in my life. Me and Jeff got nothing personal. All it, all it is is I'm, I'm, I'm very competitive and I want to win. It's nice to have the, the support of people, but I'm always going to have my loyal supporters. They're always going to support me, but you're always going to have the people that are kind of like on the edge which way to go, and then you're always going to have the people that hate me completely and will say every negative thing under the sun to, to get under my skin. But I don't care about those people. I just focus on the good and not the bad. Not everyone's going to like you, and I've got my fans that don't like me and have jumped onto the Tim Zoo train to see him go. I, they reckon that he's going to absolutely smash me, and hopefully all those people can be scratching their heads at the end of it going, oh, maybe we chose the wrong guy to support for this one. I don't know why people have gone against me. I guess it's just a, it's just a popularity contest in boxing sometimes. Team Pacquiao, got all, all the Team Pacquiao behind me. I'm sure the whole Philippines will want me to do a favour for them. <laughs>
I've got plenty of fans, and you know, I, I truly appreciate all of Australia behind me for bringing a, a super fight to Australia. Australian fans deserve this. The only reason why this fight is being made is because his last name is Zhu. Uh, his father is an absolute legend. We wouldn't be fighting him if he, his last name wasn't his dad's name. Every fighter that I've ever faced has said the same thing. You're, you're only in this because of your dad. At the end of the day, my fists have done the talking. I don't, I don't take things personal. So all I can do is, is beat him and punch him in the face. That's all I can do. If he was Tim Smith or, or whatever, he wasn't, he wasn't going to be getting this fight because I'd be looking at bigger and better things. But look, the zoo name is, is, is red hot. His father was an absolute legend. And that's exactly why this fight is happening. Him and his trainer can say whatever they want. He goes in one ear and goes out the other. I intend to show toughness, to show skill, to show brutality in this fight. And that's, why, that's what's going to happen. Tim has little flashes of, of his father in him, but he's, he's not his dad. My dad was an undisputed world champion. That's the level that I aspire to be. Some people would think that I've done a lot, but in my eyes, I haven't done anything. So that's what motivates me and that's what keeps me going because once you say that you've done this and that, that's when you start going downhill. I want to keep going uphill to the top. I've done everything I've done without him. If he was to be here, he put a lot of pressure on himself. He doesn't know how to react in situations like this. So sometimes I think it's better for him to be on distance. Your father did fight here in Townsville. There's an affinity for your family here, even though you're essentially the outsider coming from New South Wales. It's a big thing for, for a city, especially on the world title calibre. Not many Australians get the opportunity and, and it's a great thing. I'm blessed to come back here to fight for, for a big fight. I'm going to make the most of it, that's for sure. We didn't think we'd be at a stadium this soon, and, uh, but Tim's excelled in terms of his ability. And now at a stage where I think uh, a fight with Jeff Horn would see a, you know, a spectacular night. Townsville, you know, it might be his state, but I was born in this country as well. We're both Australian, we're both Aussie. So this is my, my city as much as it is his. My family has had history here. He hasn't. I think it was a, probably the Dwight Ritchie fight. It was a big occasion. There were a lot of people feeling that Dwight probably had, had the edge on Tim. Tim probably showed in that fight that he's ready to take on the world's elite. I'm undefeated in my stadium fights as well. I've had an absolute massive win against Manny Pacquiao. Then I had the, the very great win against Mundine very quickly. Hopefully this one's similar to the Mundine fight and I can end this one quickly. That would be a dream come true. It was just four months ago we were here together at Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville to announce the original date for this event. Today, the fight has gained even more importance for Australian boxing and for Australian sport, and we are poised for this all-Aussie super fight to lead us out of a tremendously challenging period in 2020. This is the fight that starts a nation, and boxing is back. The COVID period was a relaxing time, really, just sitting back at home, not doing much, enjoying the family time. But I was making sure every day I was doing something because I knew the fight was always going to happen again. I made sure I was doing some work at home to, to be ready. In the past, I have taken the opportunity and, and smashed some really delicious food in, in the off periods, but I've been very careful and I haven't done that this time. And people who, who are thinking I have, you can Reevaluate that when it comes fight night. I felt a lot harder at childcare. <laughs> I got the kids, the kids see me and they're something. It was a good time to, to reflect on things and be able to, to put things in perspective to, to where I want to be in, in my career. Nothing in my life matters besides boxing. When you put that in perspective, that means the training three, four times a day. I, had a, I made a little gym in my garage and I was able to, to learn things and I was able to stick in my garage for, for hours and hours on ends, just trying to perfect my craft. I actually became obsessed. It's a sickness and I'm going to win. In these couple of months of being at home, it's made me realise that that's all I want in life and, and that's to win. Lockdown was great. From the normal busy 
hustle and bustle that I'm normally going through, going to training, going to other things. It was nice to just sit at home and enjoy the company of Joe and the kids and couldn't go to the parks, unfortunately, but we were just able to have some great family time and enjoy each other's company. It's a great opportunity to, to restart boxing. It's been on a pause, so it's good to, to restart it. To be the first person with Jeff to, to restart it, it's, it's an honour. I had a bit of a rest in terms of myself mentally, but I, I never stopped training. I was in the gym non-stop. I knew this fight's going to happen. I knew this fight was going to come, so I stayed focused and I knew what was, what was going on. You had an extra chance to recover from some really difficult fights and maybe to think about where this fight fits in. Who do you think it advantages most? Look, I think it advantages both of us this break. Tim's a super hungry young fighter. He's He'll be raring to go come fight night for this one. But also, I have I just went through another hard fight at the end of last year. It's going to be great to have this little extra break. It, I think it will do me great, not just me mentally, but also physically uh, to recover from the cuts that I've had. Um, in those fights and hopefully it will all be good come the 26th of August. It definitely rares me to go for this fight and I'm like, I'm all guns blazing at the moment. When he said he had the break, he maintained. I didn't maintain, I became better. If I know who I'm fighting for and I'm fighting for my family, my kids, my wife, that gives you so much motivation. You have no idea what type of motivation it gives you to win. Are you surprised looking at the betting markets for this fight that you're a massive outsider? I'm, I'm absolutely shocked at the betting markets at the moment. I, I can't believe with what I've done in the past and for what Tim's done and you compare the two to say that he's definitely, well, that's what they're saying, he's definitely going to win. He's a hot favourite for this fight and I'm shocked. I, I kind of want to turn it around and put some money on myself. I love being underdog. It makes me fight, I think, to that next level and the stadium fight added in that. Um, all these things are a mix of me having my greatest victories and this is going to be one of them. I, I couldn't care less. I don't look at that stuff. There's other things that I look at and not that. We're both going to be pushing very hard for a world title fight after this. And uh, if that was to happen, we'd love to come back to the great city of Townsville and do it right here. I'm motivated no matter what. A win's a win. Becoming a world champion is what I've always wanted. The fact that it's going to be for a world title eliminator, hopefully, doesn't add more motivation, but it just gives that more of a prestige for myself. One step at a time, though, I overlook Jeff. I know what he brings, but I'm looking forward to this opportunity. Fighting Tim, like, it, it is the step towards that world title fight. So even if you were to say definitely it is for that spot, I was doing it anyway. So it's, it's all on the line for this fight for me, and I need to win it kind of solidifies your, your spot. Everyone thinks I got that world title the first time against Manny out of luck, and it definitely wasn't luck. There was a lot of hard work and, and grind put into that victory, and if I was able to do it again against another tough world champion, people can't be saying that again. The most difficult part is the initial agreement to, to make the fight happen. Jeff's team's very difficult to deal with and we found it very hard at the start. And look, I'm, I'm just happy that we got it done because it's a fight that everyone wants to see. On the whole, it's been pretty quick and pretty easy. You know, Matty's easy to deal with, I think. Once they agreed to 60-40, 10 rounds, and we get to dictate where the location is, it was all pretty much easy after that. Tim Zoo's in a position where I was at a few years ago and where I absolutely had no one and I would be jumping at the bit, just like I was with the Pacquiao fight, to, to get that opportunity, and I got given it, and he's, he's in the same position. He's been given this opportunity, and he's taken it with both hands, and good on him, but I feel like he has got to kind of fall under those, a couple of demands that I have to make as being the former champion. You know, when I said 12 rounds as a big fight, I meant 12 rounds, you know, so. He doesn't want 12 rounds, and I say that for a reason, so 10, 10 rounds doesn't bother me. I'll be ready. I train much harder than what he is, and I believe that for a fact. 12 rounds is just that little bit extra that I'm like, mm, it's kind of a world title fight, a 12 round pace, and I'll, cause I can save that hard preparation for possible future fights that, that might happen after this. Any concern from you, the fact that your boxer is the one wanting the 10 rather than the 12, that he's the one thinking about not wanting to dig into the preparation? This fight is won or lost in what's done in the preparation. And Jeff learned some enormous lessons out of the recent series of fights with Michael Zarafa. And uh, as a result, Tim Zhu's going to pay a price. 
Tim is definitely a, a sharp shooter. He's got very, very good boxing ability. He's got a good eye. So I feel like he's kind of like a tower that just keeps sniping guys down. And that's the type of fighter Tim is. He's a tough boy. He, he comes out always swinging and he never wants to lose. And it's always, always going to be a tough fight when you've got a competitor like that. And in terms of boxing IQ and skills, I don't think he is up there at the top level. But he's got that hunger and toughness and that rugged in him. So it, it makes up for an interesting fight. I've definitely had a lot more wars than Tim has. Whether that makes me tougher than him, I don't know. But I certainly feel like I could probably handle a bit more pain than he has, or I certainly have handled a bit more pain than he has. I can take a punch and I can keep moving forward. Have I been able to show it in front of the whole of Australia and in front of the whole world? Not yet. I've let my skills do the talking. And, you know, hopefully this fight brings something different to, to just skills, but it, it brings a beast out of me. I want to make it a fight. I don't want to make it a clinic. I want to make it a fight. I think that's a bad idea. I certainly don't want to be saying, yeah, I just want to get into brawls. I guess he's young at heart, which is probably why he wants to do that. He wants to test himself out, but he'll quickly learn he doesn't want to be in that situation. When Jeff Horn gets in there with that total confidence and hits Tim really, really hard, and his eyes roll back in his head, he's going to go, heck, this guy is not scared of me. When Jeff hits Tim, Tim's going to go, oh, wow, that hurt. Everyone who gets hit by Jeff always says, I just can't believe how hard he hits. forward to, to having a competitor such as Jeff Horn with his style to showcase the whole world that it's not just skills that pay the bills, that you've got to have everything in your arsenal. My dad always says fight smart. Sometimes you've got to fight hard. Sometimes you've got to dig into the trenches and do stuff that you have never done before. And this is the fight I plan to do that. I can fight two different ways. Obviously, my roughing up style has worked a treat in the past. and. That might be the, the style to beat Tim, I don't know. I guess I'll be throwing both at him. I can be there to hit, but I've got that toughness about me. I don't necessarily go down or I don't stay down at least. So I don't know if I've seen him really on the back foot and someone really taking it to him. So I guess that's a bit unknown about Tim, but Tim has got a very good boxing ability and he's very good on the gap. So try and get me, I guess. Every opponent that's faced me, I've been able to adapt. And I can't wait to see the, the adaptation and be able to suck the life out of him throughout the rounds and be able to, to go for the stoppage victory. He's going to be trying to time that one shot to, to get me as I come in, and I'm going to make sure that my fainting is, is really good, and I'm working on that with Glenn to make sure my broken rhythm is there so that I'm unpredictable coming forward. This is the best mentally I've seen Jeff since, I think, pre-Pacquiao. He actually walks in the gym now with a smile on his face, and of course it's hard work. It's really hard work, but, you know, I'm pleased to see that. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to August 26. Jeff Ward has the tenacity, the fitness, the, the unawkward style to beat anybody. And Tim Zhu is going to find it very hard trying to work out Jeff Ward. He's not like a brew baker or anybody who's going to be straight in front of you. I believe that if Jeff Horn had somebody in his corner that had some kind of boxing IQ, that uh, he'd, he'd be champion for a while to come. If I had a pick, and I don't know, you know, it's hard for me to tell, you'd have to go with the guy who has more experience and is not over the hill, and that's Jeff. I think Jeff, you know, has too much experience with Tim Zhu at this time. but. I've seen in boxing many, many times where a guy who is less experienced is able to make that leap up in a particular fight and performs better than anybody anticipated and wins the fight. So I think it's a good, good fight. It's a toss-up fight. If I had a bet on it now, I would bet on Horn. What's your prediction for fight night? What happens in this actual fight? Tim Zhu. Stoppage, round six. Tim's making a massive step up. He's coming from under 18s up to State of Origin. 
time will tell if he can handle the jump. It is another step, but I feel like it's just a, it's just another fight for myself, another test. I was brought up in all of this. I've expected all this, I've, I've seen it all for myself. It doesn't bother me, I don't get nervous. I just enjoy it. He can be tagged, I've seen guys tag him, and I guess that you know there's weaknesses there. I think that my style definitely gives Tim a problem. He's that very boxer style and, and likes to sharpshoot, but if someone's not there to be hit and they're continually moving, it's going to frustrate him, and we're going to see what Tim's like under pressure. Back in the amateur days, I remember growing up, 16 years old, I remember competing in the same tournaments as Jeff. You know, his style's awkward. I don't have to watch him exactly, but I, I, know, I know how he's like. His biggest victory is against Manny Pacquiao. I've sparred Manny Pacquiao and, you know, I've done more rounds with Manny Pacquiao than Jeff Horn has. So I, I know how he's like. I've had a fair few pats over the years. So I couldn't tell you which one was which. I guess I've just got to mentally prepare for the fact that I will cut open. I will have blood running down my face. So I am used to it, unfortunately. I don't like saying I'm used to getting cuts and blood dripping down my face, but it's not something that I'm scared of. He takes a lot of shots. Unnecessary punishment. His school of boxing is different to mine. In boxing, it's hit or not get hit. Jeff Styles like that. He comes in forward, rushing with his head up. Of course, you're going to get hit. My skill level, he underestimates. My work rate, he underestimates. And he's got pressure on him that he's never felt before. I know what I have. I know what I can do. I'll prove all the doubt is wrong. Through my training, determination and focus, I'm not going to, just to win the fight, I'm coming to stop him. I think Tim's going to box well, as he normally does, but I think I'm going to break him down and and hopefully finish the fight. Jeff, the time is done. It's my time now. Tim, your dad was a legend, but you're not ready for it.